Lolita, light of my life, fire of my loins, my sin, my soul, Lolita, the tip of the tongue taking a trip of three steps down the palate to tap at three on the teeth, Lolita. When you hear the name Lolita, what do you think of? You probably think of her, but maybe her. Maybe you even think of her, which same, but I'll talk about that later. Regardless of the specific image, you probably think of a young seductress, someone who uses her femininity and sex appeal to get what she wants. When we call a girl a Lolita, we're using it to define something that she is, not something that is perpetrated against her. You probably don't think of a girl who looks like this, or this, or even this. But the girls in these pictures are the same age as, or older than, the Lolita written about in the Vladimir Nabokov novel that made the name a cultural diagnosis for a sexually precocious young girl. It's very possible that if you haven't read the novel, you are not aware that Lolita is 12 when Humbert Humbert, her future rapist, meets and becomes obsessed with her. So why the hell does the review on the back of my book say the only convincing love story of our century and how the hell did this become one of my favorite books? Now, before we go any further, I wanna make it absolutely clear that I'm not telling you how to feel about this book. Even without the awful way that culture has twisted this into some kind of romantic love story, the text itself is really hard to read because of what a monster Humbert is. I'm not saying you have to like this book. I'm not even really arguing in favor of this book. I'm also not going to be doing necessarily an in-depth analysis of this book, though, that is kind of one of my favorite things to do. I am just simply here to provide a further cultural context to a deeply misunderstood classic. The first time I read Lolita, I was 16, and I had recently become very, very obsessed with this album, Born to Die by Lana Del Rey. In this album, there is a song specifically titled Lolita. Now, as the teen who did everything they could to be pretentious, I, of course, was familiar with the fact that this was a novel. And inspired by the bubblegum cherry emoji picture that Lana Del Rey embodied, I decided to pick this up and give it a read. I read it in a week. And even though we only got glimpses of her personality, I immediately fell in love with Dolores. I thought she was strong, and I admired her fiery temper and her efforts to get what she wanted, mostly to get as far away from Humbert Humbert as possible. I was only four years removed from Dolores' age by then, and 12, 13 didn't seem insanely young to me. I felt like I could be Dolores. The next time I read Lolita, I was 12 years removed from Dolores' age, and the novel read very differently to me. Once again, I recognized how excellent the writing was, and I still loved the bits of Dolores we got to see through the gaze of Humbert's lens, but at the same time, I kind of realized how expertly manipulative the text was. That is something that many reviews seem to miss. So let's start with a brief summary. No spoilers, but honestly, I don't think this book is hindered by knowing what happens. Lolita is a novel about a man named Humbert Humbert, who is sexually attracted to what he refers to as nymphettes, girls between the ages of nine and 14. The novel is written as a confession, in first person, by Humbert himself. He is, by his own account, attractive and clearly educated by the way that he writes, which is part of what makes it so easy for him to move through the world undetected. When he moves to the town of Ramsdale, he goes to find a place to stay and comes across a free room in the same house as Dolores Hayes, a 12-year-old girl with whom he quickly becomes obsessed. This obsession leads to his sexual abuse, emotional abuse, and eventual kidnap and rape of Dolores, who he, and only he, refers to as Lolita. Side note, I'm only going to be referring to her as Dolores because that is her name and not the name of the sexual fantasy that Humbert turns her into. Humbert is an unreliable narrator, even if only because everyone is an unreliable narrator. But more importantly, he is a grown man obsessed with a 12-year-old girl to the point of kidnap, rape, and murder. He admits to multiple stays in psychiatric hospitals and manipulating his psychiatrist to rebuff their attempts at treating him. He is sexist, classist, and all in all, a pompous, heartless human being. But Humbert thinks of himself as the tragic hero, so he writes himself that way. He wants us to believe that he is the truthful one, that he was seduced by Dolores, and really isn't she at fault? Isn't she the one with all the power? The entire point of the novel being written from Humbert's perspective is that it allows him to twist and take control of the narrative in whatever way he sees fit. 
Through his beautiful, clever, manipulative prose, he tells us things that happen, tells us his perception of Dolores and her actions, and we are expected to take him at face and surface value. That is something the movie adaptations absolutely do, but I'll talk about that later. And once again, referencing the quote on the back of my book, so do a lot of people who have read this. So what about authorial intent? What did Nabokov intend when writing this novel? Now, normally I'm a big proponent of the death of the author theory. I believe that anything the author meant to say is just going to be in the text anyway, but... For the sake of this particular argument, I feel like it's important to discuss. So essentially, while I don't think Nabokov dealt with his novel and its titular character as thoughtfully as he should have, and though he often said there was no moral message to Lolita, it was clear by the way he spoke about the novel that, at the very least, he thought what happened to Dolores was immoral. Take, for example, this interview with the Paris Review, in which the interviewer says, Humbert, while comic, retains a touching and insisting quality, that of the spoiled artist. Nabokov responds with the following. I would put it differently. Humbert Humbert is a vain and cruel wretch who manages to appear touching. That epithet, in its true, teary iridized sense, can only apply to my poor little girl. Nabokov, in all my research of him, never gave an indication that he thought Humbert was anything but contemptible. It's also very clear that Nabokov has no interest in pandering to those who use his book to rationalize pedophilia. In the same interview, the interviewer tries to make the point that in Hollywood and New York, relationships are frequent between men of 40 and girls very little older than Lolita. They marry to no particular public outrage, rather to public cooing. Nabokov shuts him down pretty fast. Humbert was fond of little girls, not simply young girls, nymphettes or girl children, not starlets and sex kittens. Lolita was 12, not 18, when Humbert met her. You may remember that by the time she is 14, he refers to her as his aging mistress. Also, I feel it is important to note that while Nabokov never said or specifically cited this as a reason for writing Lolita, he himself wrote that he was a victim of childhood sexual abuse. Again, he never said that this was a reason why he wrote Lolita, but given the subject matter, I feel like it's important to bring up. So we have plenty of evidence in the text that Humbert is a terrible man. We have the author himself calling Humbert a vain and cruel wretch. If both of those things are true, how the hell did we get here? Well, if you're asking for my opinion, which if you clicked on this video, you are, so thanks for caring. I believe that the warping of Lolita's narrative was the result of releasing it into a misogynistic society that is quick to blame the victim, particularly in cases of sexual violence. There is a widespread belief that women should be controlled, that women need to be submissive to the men around them, a belief that was even stronger in the 1940s and 50s when Lolita is set. What I've seen in my own life is that men attracted to younger girls aren't necessarily attracted to them because they're younger, but simply because they're easier to control. It's not a one-to-one. -one. Humbert is absolutely a pedophile, as we can see from his disdain and revulsion toward adult women, but he undoubtedly found, at the very least, an enticing opportunity to have a young girl under his thumb when boarding at the Hayes house. The phenomenon of sexualizing young girls and infantilizing adult women, which allows them both to become sexual objects as well as to make them more easily controllable and malleable by the men around them, is a can of worms that I really don't have the time or energy to go over in this video. If you'd like to hear or read more about this, you can check out The Lolita Effect by Dr. Minakshi Gigi Durham. Something I hear fairly often is that Dolores expresses affection toward Humbert, that she flirts with him and shows an attraction to him. This fits neatly in with the asking for it narrative that has pervaded patriarchal societies for centuries. For all the victim blaming we see in America today, things were much worse in the 1940s. My counter our point is simple. Dolores is 12. 12 year olds should be allowed to have crushes on adults. It is the adult's responsibility to keep that relationship platonic. So much of childhood is spent trying to understand the way that relationships function, the difference in expectations between friends, parents, siblings, classmates, romantic partners, teachers, extended family, and so on. Children often don't know what's appropriate, don't know when they're being taken advantage of, which is why, again, it is the adult's responsibility to keep things appropriate. All young people should be safe to work through their feelings of attraction, sexuality, and romantic affection without an adult taking advantage of that vulnerability. To conclude this section, I would like to remind you not to try me with that it was a different time bowl. Nabokov knew he wasn't writing about a normal relationship. Even if boundaries were less defined back then than they are now, the fact is people knew that a 30-something-year-old man should not be dating, sleeping with a 12-year-old.
So moving on to the other reason why I think Lolita is a breeding ground for misconceptions, the movie adaptations. With most people, that's their first introduction to the story, and neither adaptation, Kubrick's or Lines, works particularly well as an adaptation. Not surprising, considering that both directors, who also contributed to the writing of the script, called Lolita a love story. The thing about film is that it appears objective until you make it clear that it isn't. We are seeing things play out rather than being told what happened. With the book, we get the foreword, letting us know that all this is from the perspective of a severely psychologically disturbed individual. It is, in my opinion, one of the most crucial aspects to really understanding the novel. The movies, however, don't give us much indication that this is all from Humbert Humbert's perspective, aside from the occasional voiceover. I don't like either movie, but the Kubrick adaptation, I begin knowing that the Kubrick bros will try to fistfight me in the comments, it's missing what I believe to be a deeply, deeply important part of Lolita narrative, Dolores' misery. The line version, while oh my god so deeply flawed in its over-sexualization of Dolores and her 14-year-old actress Dominique Swain, shows some of Dolores' unhappiness and her dislike of Humbert, as well as more of Humbert's general selfish cruelty, though not enough. Take this scene, one of the saddest in the book, and how it was portrayed in Lyne's adaptation. We made up very gently that night. You see, she had nowhere else to go. That last line always makes me feel ill, and I applaud its inclusion in an adaptation, even if Lyne's version still didn't do enough to show Humbert's depravity. Kubrick, on the other hand, generally showed Humbert as sophisticated, high-class, well-mannered. The only times we see him be awful is toward Dolores' mother, Charlotte, and even then, not only was that awfulness diluted from the book, but they also go out of their way to make Charlotte as awful as possible. So, yeah, I kind of hate both movies. And while the misinterpretation of the text by reviewers who originally reviewed the novel is definitely what set up the misconceptions to come, I believe that the movies are largely to blame for the entire culture surrounding the story now. All the Lolita-based advertising and the pop songs to come referencing girls in heart-shaped glasses is a pull directly from Kubrick's movie poster, Heart-shaped glasses are never worn by Dolores in the book. Lolita has not left the cultural consciousness. You can hear her called a favorite by actors and directors and screenwriters. You can see her in ads, hear her in music, wear her in linen rompers and eyelet lace dresses. But perhaps most importantly, you can read the experiences that women all over the world have had with her. I have a very personal relationship with Lolita, with Dolores, and with the subject matter portrayed in this novel. That's why I find the looks of disgust in response to this text so frustrating, but not as absolutely disgusting as hearing that Lolita is being used to groom young girls into sexual relationships with adult men. For all of my gripes with this novel, and don't let this video fool you, I absolutely have them. Lolita is not a story that belongs to the Humbert Humberts of the world. It belongs to the Dolores Hayes's. It belongs to the young girls who are sexualized too soon, who can't explore their own sexuality without people assuming it is in service of men. While I think the way the cultures twisted Lolita to fit the predatory and misogynistic status quo is abhorrent, the book, to me, will always be about the ferocity of young girls in the face of adults who want to exploit them. You look 100% better when I can't see you. So that's a slice of Lolita. Uh, I know this is a bit of a different video for me, but I loved making it and I hope you guys liked it as well and that you learned something new. Honestly, I had to cut so much of the original script because I just kept going on tangents and I, I just love this book, you guys, and I love talking about this book. If you were thinking about reading Lolita and the dude bros who are like really creepy about loving this book kind of pushed you away from it, I would highly encourage you to give it another shot. Obviously, the subject matter is really disturbing. Humbert's perspective is really disturbing, but if it's something that you can handle, I would really encourage you to pick it up. It's an absolutely beautiful novel, absolutely compelling. And not only is the novel compelling, but the cultural conversation around it is just popping off right now. So I would highly encourage you to give it a read and to do some more research. I'm leaving the sources that I use for this video down below, but I'm also going to leave some resources to allow you to learn more about Lolita, the novel itself, and like the culture surrounding it. If you have any further questions,
Uh, I know a lot about <laughs> Nabokov and Lolita, so if you want to leave them down below, I will do my best to answer them or point you in the direction of an article or somebody who can answer them for you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful day. And to steal this ending from the absolutely fabulous YouTuber Miss Lola, to all the people out there who think that Lolita is a love story, you look 100% better when I can't see you.